Welcome to episode 38 of the Gospel Culture Podcast. I'm taping this episode in October of 2020, and in my lifetime, I've never seen a more polarized, divided season full of anger and depression, and perhaps more than anything, a season full of fear. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about a kind of fear that we are actually called to as Christians, a fear that gives us stability and joy and hope in this world. So I'll talk about our call to fear right after this. This cultural moment is one with many temptations to fear. Fear of who's going to win the presidency and what will that mean for the future of the country. Uh, Fear about the coronavirus pandemic. Fear about the failure of our economy and for many the loss of their livelihoods. Fear about what it will look like to be a Christian going forward in a culture that appears to be increasingly hostile toward the church, and that's to say nothing about the many issues we deal with in our personal lives and in our families. The scriptures are full of the voice of God saying to us in, uh, in our fears, do not fear, do not be afraid, fear not, I am with you, fear not. And yet there is a kind of fear that we are commanded to pursue. It's called the fear of God. And so the Bible says to us, don't fear, but also you must fear. But we're talking about two very different things. It must be said that apart from the grace of God, all who are in their sin should rightly be afraid, terrified of God, because everyone apart from his grace will one day face his righteous wrath in judgment against our rebellion. But having experienced the grace of God in and through the gospel, where through the person and work of Jesus Christ we are forgiven, cleansed, adopted, and stand right before God, we walk in the fear of the Lord, but that fear is not about cowering in terror before him in his holy grandeur. John Piper comments, God doesn't want us to cower like slaves in the household where the children should be enjoying sweet peace in their father's care. Now, having established this, yet there still is a calling for us to fear God. We may understand what is meant by this as having a strong sense of reverential awe before God. And this fear is a joy and a delight for the Christian. We might define the fear of God as trembling with joy before his glory. Isaiah prophesied of the Messiah who was to come when he said in chapter 11, verses 2 and 3, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. Jesus found delight, he found pleasure, enjoyment in fearing the Lord. The fear of God is a joy and delight, and it is also life-giving and full of healing for our souls. Proverbs 14, 27 says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. And Proverbs 3, verses 7 and 8 say, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. The great wonderful Puritan and author of The Pilgrim's Progress, John Bunyan, once wrote, Godly fear flows from a sense of the love and kindness of God to the soul, where there is no sense of hope of the kindness and mercy of God by Jesus Christ, there can be none of this fear, but rather wrath and despair, which produces a fear that is devilish, but godly fear flows from a sense of hope of mercy from God by Jesus Christ. 
when we rightly understand a sense of the holy love and glorious kindness of God toward us in our souls, the epicenter of this being the cross, where our Savior took our sin and gave us his grace, it has a happy and hopeful and humbling effect on our souls. We are able to tremble with joy before the sovereign king of the universe. We are enfolded in his love and kindness. And in that place of joyful trembling, we can face face this world and the future with calm, stability, and hope. There is in that place of godly fear, delight, life, healing, and refreshment. And I think we could all use more of those things. So in your temptations to fear whatever they are, look above the very real and difficult issues in front of you and behold your God. Tremble with joy before his holy love and glorious kindness. Bow before him in the splendor of his holiness and know him as the sovereign king who is superintending every millisecond and every millimeter of everything that is coming our way that we face this year and beyond. Psalm 86, verses 8 through 11, the psalmist says to God, There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. So the psalmist beholds the glory of God, understands that the future of this world is one where all will submit to him in his sovereign royalty and might. And his prayer is to fear him. He says, I'm scattered, I'm fractured, reintegrate me, prays the psalmist. Unite my heart to fear your name. Because when we pray this way and God is pleased to answer, it puts everything in perspective in light of the glory of God. What a great prayer that is, as we seek to be faithful to our call to fear God in a world full of temptation and turmoil. Well, thanks for listening to this episode. If you've not already done so, I encourage you to subscribe to this podcast so you can be notified as new content is uploaded. God bless you. Bye for now.